list hearing from the town of Oakville, uh, Nabil and Daniel. And uh, thanks for joining us. We're gonna get started now. As a community, we have the responsibility to honor, care for, and respect all the creation gives to provide us with life. This includes the land, water, air, fire, animals, plants, and our ancestors. The Anishinaabek people have utilized this land for millennial, and we'd like to acknowledge their direct descendants, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, as a rightful caretaker and title holder of this land upon which we live, work, and conduct ourselves. We acknowledge our treaty relationships and responsibilities to both the land and these original peoples. We also recognize that this land is rich in pre-contact history and customs, which include the Anishinaabek and Haudenosaunee, and since European contact has and continues to become home for Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples. And it is in the spirit and intent of the Dish With One Spoon Wampum Agreement whereby we will collectively care for and respect the land, water, animals, and each other in the interest of peace and friendship, and for the benefits of not only ourselves, but our future descendants. Thank you again for joining us for the Oakville Ready Call. Uh, my name is Lisa Kohler. I work at the Halton Environmental Network, and I am part of the Oakville Ready team. Uh, just a quick overview of tech for this call. Uh, please feel free to use the chat box. Uh, you can privately message uh, us at the Halton Environmental Network or Oakville Ready, and we're here to help you with any tech issues you may have. Uh, please also use the chat box, ask questions to Nabil or Daniel. They are on the line and they are, would be happy to have conversations with you. Uh, please remember to take care of your shawl, share the air uh, and the chat box air. Uh, let's question ideas, not people. Uh, we're here to call people in and not out. Of course, if you need any support regarding the COVID-19 pandemic, please feel free to visit the Halton website, www.halton.ca, or call 311. I'd like to introduce Trisha Henderson now from the town of Oakville. Uh, Trisha, take it away. Great, thank you, Lisa. Um, so I'm just gonna take a couple moments here to describe the Oakville Ready Program, which is kind of the program that brought us all here today. Uh, so the Oakville Ready Program was funded by the Oakville Community Foundation, and it's a partnership between the Halton Environment Network and the Town of Oakville. Um, the Oakville Ready Program aims to, aimed, because we did it, uh, to establish six faith-based organizations within Oakville to act as neighborhood hubs for instances of extreme weather, such as localized flooding, high wind, ice storms, power outages, and even house fires. Uh, it really is a neighbor helping neighbors type of program where we are trying to build community capacity and resiliency through a network of people and a network of neighborhood hubs that are located within vulnerable areas of Oakville. Just go, yeah, perfect. Um, so as I mentioned, the Oakville Ready program was implemented about a year and a half ago. Um, and really it's just to alleviate some of that anxiety and stress that residents face in the first one to four hours after an emergency happens. Um, during that one to four hours, a lot of the paramedics and emergency management personnel are out busy correcting and rectifying the situation and that is why they often tell you to be prepared for yourself for the first 72 hours or up to three days because it really is in that first short time span that all the resources really are deployed to help rectify the situation and residents are kind of left on to fend for themselves. Uh, so what this program does is we would open up um, some of these hubs and you are free to go there to charge your electronics, get a warm cup of tea, and these hubs will have a direct line of communication with the Town of Oakville's Emergency Management Department. So you'll be able to gain information on when the problem is going to be solved, when you can go back to your house, when the power will be on and things like that. So as I mentioned, um, we did accomplish the goal of uh, establishing, establishing six neighborhood hubs. We actually got seven um, in our first pilot year and you can see them up there. Um, they are really great relationships that are developing out of this program. Uh, we're learning a lot from uh, the faith leaders and the congregants of these organizations, as well as we're providing them a lot of information on emer emergency management at the regional and municipal level. Um, it is a partnership between the Town of Oakville's Climate Action Emergency Management and the Halton Environment Network, uh, but we do receive additional supports from Halton Region Emergency Management, 
Faith in the Common Good and Crew, which is an extreme weather uh, resiliency uh, operation out of Toronto. So as I mentioned, OPA already really was put into place to deal with um, the increased frequency of extreme weather events uh, linked to our changing climate. But in light of COVID-19 and the requirements for physical distancing, we really have pivoted the program to try to build a virtual community. And we've been hosting webinars such as this over the past five to six weeks now, I guess. Um, and you can find them all on our website after this. Um, so as I mentioned, Oakville Ready does have a website. It's oakvilleready.ca. And we also have a Twitter account at Oakville Ready. And both of these are populated with uh, a lot of information on what you can do to prepare yourself in extreme weather events or what you can do to keep yourself busy and entertained during this uh, physical distancing period. Um, as Lisa mentioned, we do encourage you that if you have any questions about the actual pandemic um, within the region or your own health, uh, please visit the halton.ca website or dial 311 for immediate um, access. So the reason that we're here today is the heart of Oakville beats on and we're here to hear from Daniel Risdale and Nabil Rahman. They both work with the town of Oakville in the Recreation and Culture Department and they are community development specialists among many other things. And they're gonna tell us about some of the great work that they are doing and community members are doing um, in regard to COVID-19. So if you wanna take it away, Daniel and Nabil. Sure, thank you so much. Um, so first, as, uh, as Trisha mentioned, so Nabil and myself, we work in community development um, with the Recreation Department for the Town of Oakville. So part of our job is getting the opportunity to connect with a lot of great organizations. And what we did is we reached out to those organizations in preparation for this chat, just to give the community a quick update on all the awesome things that are happening. It's not an exclusive list, um, but we really wanted to make sure that we are sharing some positive insights on what's happening. Um, so thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, I've just quickly went through the list here and it looks like there's a lot of organizational representation. So hopefully this conversation I know is going to be recorded and accessible for residents later. Hopefully we can give a lot of great stories and updates of things that are happening in the community. I see obviously Halton Environmental Network is on. It looks like folks from the Burlington Public Library and Oakville Public Library. Uh, I just, Councillor uh, Robertson is on, welcome. Um, we also have uh, executive director uh, from the uh, Alton Distress Center, uh, Donna from Food for Life, uh, Heather from, well, Heather from many things. Uh, anyways, it looks like representation is really, really strong. So if you have questions or if you have inquiries, I'm seeing Ron is on the call, Tim from Kerr Street Mission. Uh, excellent, great representation in this group today. If we can hit the next slide. Thank you, uh, I did the introductions. Uh, great. So the reality is, is very challenging. Um, a lot of the decisions uh, that Oakville residents make on a daily basis has, has changed significantly, uh, due in large part to the fact that you know, COVID-19 has come to our community. We don't want the focus of this conversation today be the challenging things, but we didn't want to move on without the reality that, that 167 of our neighbors in Oakville um, have been uh, confirmed or probable cases of, of having COVID-19. Uh, yes. Um, so today we're going to be talking about the different decisions that are being made that are kind of incredible and the exciting things that are happening that maybe aren't necessarily covered by the news. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, and with this, we also have a little bit of context. Uh, so all of the slides and the content today was reviewed by Halton Region. So some of the things we're going to be discussing um, are a little bit outreach in nature, um, but if there are any concerns about, you know, how how we are outreaching to ensure that they are safe and within the public health guidelines uh, kindly ask just write in the group chat or we can have a conversation at the end um, this is not a bid for folks to get outside and start building community um, a lot of these opportunities came together because that was the nature of those organizations and those folks business um, like our local food banks uh, to actually get out there for many of you um, doing the right thing for a community is actually staying home in these times so we're going to share some exciting uh, stories today, uh, but just remember, just because they're exciting doesn't mean um, that what you're doing staying home is any less significant and a contrib contribution to the community. 
so first thing we'll do is just take a look at our local government. So I'll invite uh, Julie Pennell um, from the Town of Oakville Senior Program uh, to quickly just talk about the Phone a Friend program and what's been happening uh, with uh, organizing seniors in our community. Thanks, Daniel. Yes, I'm Julie Pennell and I am the Recreation Coordinator at the Sir John Colburn Recreation Center for Seniors with the Town of Oakville. We're located at Third Line and Lakeshore Road and hopefully many of you have seen us when you've been at Coronation Park or driven by and seen our lovely building on Parkland. We service over 3,500 members in our community. That's our current membership base. And when we were very quickly uh, closed on the 12th of March, uh, in you know, advance of things getting troublesome, we thought it was a good decision to close. We felt it really important that we continue to reach out to our membership. And we discovered that only 2,400 of our members had an email on file. So we would be able to reach those 2,400 as often as we could through email connections. But those other 1,100 people that didn't have an email, we were concerned and worried for their health and safety and wanted to make sure that they knew about the updates and things that were happening in the centers and around our lovely town. So the staff of the senior services team undertook uh, a huge effort that first week of closure and we phoned all 1100 members that didn't have an email to check in on them and see if they wanted to participate in what we were calling phone a friend and the phone a friend program was born of this need and what it does is it pairs isolated seniors in our community with one of our volunteers from within our centers those volunteers uh, make a phone call to the identified senior matching them together and they call once or twice a week. It's a social check-in, but it does have some additional uh, purposes behind the call. We're making sure that our isolated seniors are well, safe, have groceries, aren't experiencing any pharmaceutical needs if they haven't been able to get out to get their medications or uh, numbers that they can reach if they have concerns like telehealth or um, local doctor's offices, things that they might not be able to access without having internet. And we've been incredibly blessed with the number of volunteers that have stepped up. We currently have over 55 volunteers making approximately 200 or a little over 200 calls a week to our vulnerable population. And we in fact have more seniors that have come on board in terms of volunteers uh, that want to make more calls or want to start making calls. So we now actually are very excited to say that we have some additional capacity to take on more phone calls. So if in your organizations or in your social groups, your uh, church maybe group, your mom might be in long-term care or retirement, we are extending this offer for the Phone a Friend program further out into our community and would be happy to take on additional phone calls. We're very proud of the work that we're doing with this program and we're very thankful for being able to provide this with the incredible support of our volunteers. And as Daniel has on the screen in front of you, you'll see that if you want to be placed on that program to be a recipient of a call, please call 905-845-6601 dial extension zero and tell the uh, lovely person on the end of the phone that you would like to receive a phone a friend call. And we appreciate the opportunity to share this today, Daniel and Nabil, and thank you so much. And I have another call to get to, so thank you for letting me be a part of this and we look forward to helping support the community even further. Thank you, Julie. Um, next item we wanted to bring to the attention of this group is a town's message in a bottle program. Um, so as you can imagine, there are some folks, uh, particularly seniors who are isolated, who don't have access uh, to technology and they aren't traditionally connected through means of the, you know, senior center and seniors membership. For a message in a bottle program, uh, so the town is uh, actually in my, uh, in my family room, there's 800 mason jars and we are stuffing them with you know, uh, fitness activities, exercise tips, information for the phone a friend program, candies, uh, tea bags, just goodies for folks who uh, are seniors who are isolated, and they're actually distributed through our partners at Food for Life. Uh, so that'll be coming out shortly in the next few weeks. Um, so certainly you can always contact. Um, so easy way to contact me and Nabil would be affordable access at oakville.ca. So if you know someone who would be, you know, needing of this this perk or this this 
this this jar, uh, please share it. Uh, we're also asking for folks to um, submit a piece of personal art um, or letter that we can stuff inside the jars. You might have seen them going uh, this going around social media. Uh, so essentially, each one of these these jars um, will have a, a custom letter um, that might be from a child or a peer, and it's just intended to be uplifting for those folks who you know might be experiencing isolation a little bit harder, or uh, you know get a nice nice note from the public. Um, next is just in regards to the town's rec resources. I didn't want this to go by. If, uh, if you're sitting at home and you have children, or if you find that you're getting restless and bored, uh, do check the town of Oakville's recreation resources. We've tried to organize all the different services that are, are have moved online into one place. Uh, so whether or not, not that's you know jumpstart activities on how to get active with your kids, or if it's you know leading a, an at-home you know chair exercise, you can do all, all that from the town's webpage. Uh, and that should be the next slide. Perfect. Right. So thank you, uh, everyone, for, for joining us here today. Um, next, we just want to highlight some organizations that have been doing phenomenal work, uh, given the entire situation with, with COVID-19. I do want to mention that this list is not exhaustive. There's organizations all across Oakville that are doing fantastic work, but in our in our dealings uh, and, and we came across organizations that are sort of really making an impact and we all know how difficult it is given the circumstances we find ourselves in to even be operational um, and then organizations that we're sort of highlighting have not only been organizational but they've kind of gone above and beyond. Um, so I just wanted to highlight Distress Center Halton um, for their increased support of isolated seniors as well as their investment in technology to allow their volunteers to volunteer from home. Um, and we actually have uh, Dara from uh, Distress Center Halton who can speak a little bit more uh, to this. She's the executive director. So Dara, I'm just gonna unmute you right now. Um, okay. And uh, if you just wanna give us a little bit of an update of what Distress Center Halton is doing uh, and just your experience with what COVID-19 has been all about. Um, and then we'll, we'll appreciate that a lot. Okay, thanks so much. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Uh, have a soft voice. So what we faced when we had our emergency shutdown was we did have 150 volunteers who have never worked remotely before. And we have two programs. We have our inbound calls and we've been here for 45 years. And then we have our um, telecheck program, which is our outreach program to seniors in isolation, people struggling with their mental health already, to the caregivers looking after Alzheimer's patients. So we did have, I'd say 50% of our volunteers still came in, but we nimbly had to work to get our volunteers working remotely. So with the help of Gazelle, through the referral of Crisis Services Canada, which is our national suicide line, we managed to get our, um, our telecheck volunteers working from home within the week. Didn't miss a day with our seniors. And then uh, we've just uh, started on April 1st, uh, getting the technology in to take the uh, call centers from home. A Little bit more difficult, but we started that on the 16th. So now we have a hybrid model of people still coming into the center because it's an essential service. And uh, we have much more, or we have uh, uh, people working from home. So this has allowed us to increase our capacity greatly. So we even had a caller this morning that was picked up nearly immediately and they said, I didn't, I didn't expect to get through so soon. So we know we're really making an impact for those struggling with anxiety and uncertainty and um, really having a tough time through COVID. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks so much for that, Dara, and, and continue doing the awesome work that your organization is doing, working with, um, you know, vulnerable uh, residents like seniors mm -hmm. uh, and even individuals with, uh, you know, you know, with mental health and, and anxiety. Mm -hmm. We know how those things can exacerbate a person's uh, feeling of precariousness or, or even just challenges that they're experiencing when, you know, we're talking about physical distancing, but so much mm -hmm. of physical distancing is also social distancing, right? And so to know that there's a place that they can call that they enter, the call is going to be picked up and there's going to be individuals there to support them through it. I think it's fantastic. And, and the short turnaround, it's, it's even more uh, impressive. So thank you and keep up the great work. I'm going to thank meet you. you now. Thank you so much. And we do have capacity for more seniors. So if anyone wants to reach out to me, um, you can find me online, uh, dchalton.ca. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have uh, Kerr Street Mission. Um, Sure, you guys have heard of Cursory Mission. They've been doing phenomenal work. Uh, I noticed Tim was in the call here. Um, Tim, if I unmute you for a second, 
Um, you could speak to a little bit of what uh, Kerr Street's been doing and how they've been responding to uh, some of the essential services like food and security and things like that. So Tim, if you can hear me, feel free to go ahead. Sure. Yeah, on behalf of Kerr Street Mission, uh, the biggest uh, project that they've taken on at this time is something we've always taken on, which is food distribution. Uh, our food bank is operational. Uh, it is increased uh, during this time and is open and available to people who need it. Uh, we have, uh, through the staff and dedicated volunteers, they've set up a process which really uh, encourages the distancing and the requirements, um, really focusing on really helping families in need and distress at this time. Uh, one of the areas where not only have we done fruit distribution in terms of pickup, but also for those who cannot leave their house or feel that it's unsafe, we're trying our best to get food delivered to them. One ways in which the community can help us at this time is definitely with uh, financial donations as we're trying to purchase food that uh, our people would really need and require at this time. So if anyone would like to make a donation, all of that's available through our website and that will give you directions on how to do that. Uh, not only that, but I believe that our food uh, distribution happens uh, six, six days a week. So any information on food pickup and distribution can be accessed through our website, www.kerstreet.com. Uh, also in there, you'll find a wonderful letter from our director talking about the need. Uh, one area also is that uh, if people want to help, uh, they can also uh, drop off food donations and um, uh, we need hygiene products as well. Uh, so if you feel like you'd like to drop those things off, uh, you can do that during the day. Uh, someone will be there to pick that up. Um, those are the big things that we're doing in terms of food security. Other areas, uh, like most of organizations, is because of gathering restrictions. We're trying to help our families, our children, and our youth by doing uh, online or remote programming. So through our kids and through our uh, family programs, trying to connect with families, helping their kids stay engaged, connecting them to resources such as the towns. Uh, giving them things to do, helping parents cope with that. Not only that, but helping kids with their homework that's being assigned through their schools. Through our youth, we're just trying to connect with them, whether through text messaging, through emails, uh, just constant calls, just to keep them engaged, keep them encouraged, to keep them uh, looking for the bright side of the tunnel, right? Um, so that's a, just kind of highlighting a few things that Curse Street's doing. Uh, one is definitely in the food securities, and the next is also to keep people um, you know, encouraged and filled with hope at this time. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, Tim. Um, I see that Gary, it, it looks like Gary, um, Gary signed in as well, Tim. Oh, I, oh. I, well, Tim. Gary, I don't know if Gary, I, I don't know if you heard all of Tim's Tim spiel, but if there's anything you wanted to add, feel free to. No, I, I heard most of that, Tim. Tim, well done. He's, he's got it. Uh, the, o the only thing I would add is um, Knowing that, you know, the Halt and Fresh Food Box, for example, has not been able to pack because our gym has not been available. Uh, there's probably about 750 uh, families that would normally get a, a fresh food box monthly. Um, I also know that um, Food for Life has got lots of extra food and have increased what they've been able to give for families. And I think they've done a tremendous job. But anyway, what I was going to say is we we don't want to be limited by what we're doing now or what we've done in the past. We, we want to know what families need and if Kerr Street Mission can step in the gap with, you know, leveraging our space, leveraging our volunteer network, uh, leveraging our staff, um, that's what we're here for. So I leave that open if there's, uh, you know, organizations that are saying, I don't know how to get food to people uh, or whatever then call us and we'll have a conversation. If, if we can help, we, we will try our best. Amazing, thanks, thanks so much for that, uh, Gary. Yeah, you're welcome. It's, uh, so I'll, I will go ahead and, and, and mute you now. Um, I think it's really interesting, right? Um, the way in which operations used to happen previous to COVID-19, and we all hear the new normal. Um, it's, it's sort of interesting to know that the new normal for organizations you know, can be quite collaborative in nature because resources need to be shared and needs um, that didn't exist before for certain demographics are now 
uh, starting to to exist and and that re kind of requires that collaboration so this is a great space for organizations to connect and, and and sort of have that discussion and continue that discussion uh, moving forward um, I don't know if we have anybody here from United Way of Halt and Hamilton but they're still doing fantastic work um, obviously as a foundation they, they started a new initiative called the local love uh, uh, in a global crisis they had their local love campaign kind of before the COVID-19 situation happened. Um, they adapted really well to it. They have three phases of funding available for no, nonprofit organizations who, as we know, have, have, have kind of struggled uh, because of the challenges of COVID-19. So in the first phase, uh, which was for emergency funding um, for hygiene products and, and baby products and for sort of the essentials of life, uh, that was phase one. They had the phase two, which is also for an investment in, uh, in directed to nonprofit organizations focusing on supporting seniors. We know they're um, one of the most marg vulnerable groups due to COVID-19 and the challenges um, you know, that sort of they've been experiencing. Um, so United Way of Halton Hamilton uh, is, is there to provide the support. And the third phase, which is kind of ongoing, um, is again, support for nonprofit organizations as it relates to mental health support. Um, and we know how huge that is, right? Like our well-being is so connected to uh, the the ability for our, our our own mental health to be to be well, and then sometimes that kind of gets forgotten when everybody's in in a, in a situation where they're social distancing or physical distancing. So huge shout out to United Way of Halton Hamilton for all the wonderful work they are doing. Um, and I think we can go on to the next slide. Yeah, so I built um, I built an Halton Environmental Network, and I know they're on the call, and they weren't comfortable with the humble brag, but I got to throw it over to Lisa to to share a little bit of updates on what they're doing, because the very reason we're all gathered here today in this virtual community is just because of the work that Hen has done and sort of growing, you know, just the scope of their work during this time. So Lisa, I got to toss to you. Uh, thanks, Daniel, Nabil. Um, so HEN has uh, pivoted slightly from our, our program. Uh, we are still uh, very much involved in climate action and supporting all the municipalities uh, with, uh, with the work that needs to be done for the planet. Um, but we've, we've also uh, looked to the Oakville Ready program. Uh, Trisha Henderson from the town and I have pivoted and uh, tried to create this virtual community. Uh, where we are engaging others uh, in topics uh, such as this or gardening or uh, creating food from your pantry, um, anything to, to lift people up and to create a sense of community virtually is, is what we're really interested in propelling for Oakville Ready. Uh, Oakville Ready uh, with Trisha, uh, Trisha and I also connected with all of uh, our faith-based partners and uh, ensured that they had support uh, in regards to tech. Uh, we did some tech training with them on Zoom and other platforms so that they could continue uh, virtual services and virtual community amongst themselves. Uh, Trisha also supported them with getting the, um, the phone trees enabled so uh, that they were checking on their own constituents and their own members. And, um, and, and that has been uh, very fruitful and very advantageous, I think, for community to have those resiliencies built in. So uh, thanks to Trisha for her work on that. Uh, HEN has also been trying to engage community with uh, environmental action at home. Uh, we've created a bingo card uh, where people can stay home, stay safe, but still support the planet. Um, and with the support of Region of Halton, we're distributing um, pollinator seeds. Um, so if you complete a line of our bingo card, uh, we mail you some seeds. Uh, one of our new programs, Halton Food, is also uh, working on community gardens, and we've been busy advocating for community gardens to be uh, deemed an essential service. And uh, last Saturday, we were really happy to uh, to report that that has uh, that has changed. And then we're doing other things like our, our Netflix uh, viewing parties for the younger folks uh, to watch some environmental documentaries and build that sense of belonging together. Thank you, Lisa. Um, I'll, I'll briefly touch uh, just an update from Oakville Community Foundation. I did speak with them earlier this week. I don't think anyone was on the call. They were griping about uh, lack of, um, <laughs> um, uh, what are they called, salon services, so they didn't want to be on video. Um, but it, just, just so everyone is aware, there, there is, you know, an immense amount of financial generosity happening in our community as well. So you see the figures on the screen of you know, raising over $600,000 towards the Oakville Resiliency Fund. So some of that has gone out towards things like, you know, new hospital beds. Um, the cash has gone towards the Oakville Hospital Foundation's COVID relief. Uh, we've seen a lot go towards food for life and acclaim health. Just in the initial response of, you know, 
what it takes to actually have a community respond to these challenges. Um, and you know, they, they also mentioned that there are funds that are, are geared to come from the Canadian government. So 350 million has been earmarked for uh, emergency community support. Uh, and certainly Oakville Community Foundation will, will liaise the distribution of some of that into our communities. Um, so I, even though it's not the most, uh, you know, it, it's not the most exciting story <laughs> to hear the cash moving around, it does make a huge difference because uh, many of the groups even on this call uh, have received funds from the Oakville Community Foundation since um, the start of the COVID-19 outbreak. Uh, so it is very, very important. Um, next slide, please. Great. Um, so for Food for Life and Frontline Outreach, um, I think we do have Donna on the call. So if we can throw to Donna Slater, she can give us our Food for Life update um, because I, I'm sure everyone's noticed in the news lately, Food for Life is often uh, featured in the news for great things happening in the community and as a response to COVID-19. Awesome. Thank you, Daniel. Can you hear me? Yes. Awesome, cool. So thanks for uh, inviting us on this call and for the initiative of bringing us all together to kind of talk about what's happening. And um, yeah, we've been busy at Food for Life for sure. Um, we just like, as Kerr Street mentioned, have seen that increase in the need for food. Um, currently, or last week actually, within Oakville itself, we delivered um, a thousand, it's about, almost a thousand fresh food bags within the community. Um, and that, of course, is, is in partnership with many of our great partners. And I know Ron will probably speak to that as well and the work he's done. Um, but we've continued to run our Food for Life programs in community. Um, they are run very differently, where we are pre-packing at the warehouse with um, the, actually the custodians from the Halton Catholic District School Board have come on board as volunteers for us, which has been a huge, huge undertaking and amazing uh, work that they have been doing so we're truly grateful for them um, lending us a hand right now because um, without them the bags wouldn't be getting packed right now and our fresh food bags are um, packed in size of a family size or a senior size so um, there are two different sizes in which um, a family is getting a good amount of fresh fruits vegetables um, dairy right now as well we have in-house um, and meat items if we have them um, we've also been able to um, start up some new programs in the community with the help of Halton Housing. So now we are offering a program um, at three other seniors buildings, as well as uh, another cooperative housing complex within uh, the community. So we've also seen our volunteers where um, we, when we're running the programs, we don't need as many volunteers at the program just for the social distancing piece. Um, but we've seen volunteers come over to other Food for Life programs to assist where they may be lacking in that support. So we've been able to continue some programs where we thought we would have to cancel them. We're actually continuing to run them because of that support. We've also started up the Good Soup Project where um, we're able to use some of the food items that we've received and which are challenging to go into our food bags. We're able to then now turn them into soup. Um, and send that out with our fresh food banks, which has been a huge relief for um, many of our seniors, um, as well as some of our families that we've been supporting um, with the shelter um, program as well. Um, we also have a great initiative in um, TAC right now with the um, Halton region, where we are the 311, um, through 311, where um, if anybody knows of someone who is isolated, unable to get out of their home and needs delivery, they are able to call um, our number, which is 905-635-1106, extension seven, or they can email goodfood at foodforlife.ca, um, and they will be able to start receiving a weekly delivery um, of food to their door. Um, and that is merely to support those who are not able to get out right now. Um, and then through it all, we've also continued to be able to support our community partners um, with just their regular delivery as well, such as support and housing, Halton, Summit Housing, Oak Park Neighborhood Center. So those um, organizations are able to still support their um, clients um, through this stage. So we're super grateful for the community coming together. Um, all the things that we're doing in the community is because of everybody behind us and giving us the support we need uh, to make it happen. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Donna. 
Um, uh, next, uh, if, I, if I see Ron has been patiently waiting on the call as well. Ron, can you give us uh, an update on uh, what Frontline Outreach has been up to over the past few weeks? Oh, it looks like we have to unmute Ron. Sorry, we don't hear you yet, Ron. I am on it. Thank you, Nabil. I'm Go used ahead, to Ron. that. That's okay. Thanks, <laughs> Daniel and Nabil. Um, yeah, just briefly, uh, over the last number of years, we've uh, focused on reaching out to families that live in social housing within uh, Halton. And this, uh, with COVID-19, we've focused on Oakville. And we've uh, rallied the volunteers that work with us throughout the year with uh, day camp and with uh, the summer barbecues at the sites. So there's been a lot of relationships and friendships been established between the residents and our volunteers. And uh, when the residents kind of reached out and was hit and said, you know, we can't or we don't want to uh, go out because the single moms, a lot of them are single moms, so they're concerned about getting sick and then not being able to look after the kids. And so we kind of looked around and what we had was some capacity in terms of volunteers and uh, a big trailer that uh, we have that we use in the summertime and uh, partnering with Food for Life, which a big shout out to them because um, they're just another never ending supply of uh, food. So we, uh, we connect with about 400 families in six communities. Uh, each week we do a, a we go to front line or uh, to Food for Life pick up trailer load and some is pre-bagged and some is bulk and uh, we drop them off door to door at uh, where people live and then because there is those connections uh, people will come to the door and be a short conversation hi thank you god bless and, and then sometimes we're made aware of other needs that um, for example for medications and uh, and in, in more recently um, families that needed a computer for their online school. And so people within our network uh, then have stepped up to supply those things. Um, so we're, we kind of reach where um, the needs maybe aren't being that, uh, met, but we don't uh, overlap as much. We're trying not to overlap and duplicate or compete with other resources that are already out there. Uh, we do rely totally on the uh, donations to operate. And uh, so uh, just make that known. Um, other than that, uh, in the summertime, we're looking at, you know, what about camp for the kids? And uh, so the staff are coming up with some creative ideas of how to run little mini groups, um, depending on what the uh, what the, uh, the lockdown, when that is eased up, if at all, this summer. But if uh, if it is, why we're prepared to uh, to launch on short notice. Uh, again, thank you for the opportunity to share what we're doing, and on behalf of those that receive. Uh, again, uh, we're all in this together and doing what we can. So thank you. Thank you, Ron. Um, thank you. And like Ron said, thank you to everyone who's been um, participating and, and just helping out. The uh, next slide, please. Um, just a few, uh, last two organizations to really go over here. Um, yes. Uh, Nabil, yeah. I don't know if you saw Judith on the call. I don't think Judith made it on. I don't think she is. Um, that shouldn't take away from the wonderful work um, that Project Autism is, is doing. Um, this was actually a resident who reached out to us to ensure that we uh, identified uh, Project Autism and, and, and sort of the fantastic work that they do across Ontario and also in, in Oakville. Um, you know, they're providing resources for individuals uh, who are on the autism uh, spectrum. Uh, art therapy, baking, they are affiliated with the Halton uh, youth uh, council with, with uh, members from that uh, from, from youth council uh, from project autism salsa dancing and so much more and we know now that there is a need to support vulnerable residents even more so uh, now given the, the challenges with, with COVID-19 so project autism is doing a fantastic job a resident reached out to us to make sure that they got a shout out uh, so it's really well deserved um, and then one of the initiatives that you know we came across uh, which was a uh, hope, uh, uh, I don't know if it's Hope Dill Bible Church or Hope Bible Church, um, in which they created Boxes of Hope program uh, where they deliver boxes uh, to folks in the residence in need. Um, and it's packed with, uh, you know, non-perishable uh, non food items, cleaning supplies, paper products um, that they've received from the community. So again, this is a lot, so many different ways in which community continues to happen 
Uh, it happens in, in so many different ways. It happens from an institutional municipal level. It happens from a religious organizational level. It happens from uh, nonprofits uh, and, and social service organizations. So, um, you know, it's fantastic that it's, it's sort of taking place in that, in that range. Um, and then we can go on to the next slide after this. Great. So um, I want to start highlighting some things that I've noticed uh, in, um, in the news or in, in social media. So first of which is just from uh, Dylan's Distillery out just down the QEW. Uh, so you'll notice some uh, happy, happy Oakville firefighters there um, who actually uh, have hand sanitizer and sanitizer that was created from the distillery. Um, so Dylan's um, makes a mighty fine gin, um, but naturally during this time of COVID-19, they decided to uh, use their stills and their, their operations towards you know, filling the, uh, filling the gap of the shortfall of, of sanitizer, which has just been tremendous. And they were kind enough to donate that to the Oakville Fire Department. So thank you to them. Just an awesome example of, uh, uh, you know, that pivot towards doing some good. Uh, next slide, please. This is a, another great organization that uh, Halton Environmental Network um, shared with me. Uh, I see Heather is on the call, so if, if I can forward to Heather to share some of the just awesome stuff that's happening on Facebook with uh, Canada SOS. Hi everyone, I'm Heather from many places. Uh, my closest tie to this group is that I work with Halton Environmental Network, but today I'm here because I'm one of many volunteers with Canada SOS. Uh, we are an, a national group now. We have over 30 regions across Canada uh, making fabric masks and scrub caps and headbands with buttons for frontline workers who need them. Uh, so this, uh, this is the mask that I made for myself. Um, but we, we're mostly getting them from our volunteers. Across Canada now we've had over 131,000 items requested and we've delivered over 42,000 of those. Uh, so we're a really active group and moving fast, um, but not fast enough. So I, I'm hoping after this I might get a few new uh, recruits. In just our local group, which covers Halton, Hamilton, and a lot of the surrounding regions that don't have dedicated groups, we have delivered over 6,000 items, all sewn by our local members, and we have over 14,000 requests. So we've done a lot, but still have so much more to do. Um, and a lot of what we're making are going to healthcare workers uh, and really like these aren't tested items, so they are, they're meant as a last resort, and we always say that when we deliver them, but a lot of our frontline workers just don't have access to that proper personal protective equipment, and so some of them are requesting from us so that, uh, for example, a lot of healthcare workers would use a fabric mask kind of like this one to put over top of an N95 mask when, um, for instance, they are limited to one N95 mask for a whole shift, so it can help it last a little longer, uh, we have a lot going to grocery store workers, truck drivers, all the essential workers who are still helping our community thrive, um, but who just need that little bit of extra protection. Uh, and scrub caps that are holding people's hair back so that they uh, don't need to brush the hair off their face because we all know we're not supposed to be touching our face right now. So if anyone on this call is a frontline worker and you're in need of any of this equipment that we're offering, um, please submit a request. Uh, our website is canadasos.ca. I'm going to try to remember to write that in the comments after in the chat box. Um, but there's a, a button on there to request items for you or your coworkers, your organization. Uh, and also, thank you for helping take care of our community. And if you are somebody who sews or someone who would want to drive or wash, oh, thank you. I see that someone else already shared it. Um, we also need a lot more sewers. We have a lot who are, well, obviously we've sewed thousands of items already, but if we can get on top of all these thousands that are still needed, it would be amazing. So if you sew or if you know somebody who sews, uh, please get in touch with me or join our Facebook group. Um, our local group is Canada Sews dash uh, Halton Hamilton region or something very close to that. So that's it from me. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Yeah, you'll notice I took some snippets from your Facebook page there. It is, it's pretty amazing how many folks are uh, uploading pictures and just updates of, you know, I can imagine the amount of time that people are sewing from home just, you know, as a donation and as volunteers. So it's really, really awesome. Um, the next, sorry, next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, the next uh, resident I wanted to shed some light on, and Joseph's not on the call, um, 
Um, some folks might notice Joseph's name. Uh, he's, uh, he's one of Oakville's um, more prominent fashion designers. Uh, he's done, you know, red carpet um, features for TIFF. And um, anyways, he, he, he's an Oakville resident uh, who operates his fashion studio out of Burlington. And he has pivoted his, um, his motion now towards uh, making the accessories of the masks. Um, so he's been able to you know, generate a great deal of interest in his masks uh, using high quality products. And he does donate a large portion of um, the fee he charges towards his local hospital with Joe Brand, which is down the road. Um, and Joseph is actually um, uh, the, the folks, uh, he was actually the, the gentleman who was kind enough to donate um, or provide the 800 masks for the message in a bottle um, campaign that we spoke of earlier. Um, so that was just incredible. So, you know, 800 of those vulnerable uh, seniors that we're reaching out to with the message in a bottle program, they'll actually have um, one of those fabric masks that were made locally by one of their own, Joseph. Uh, so I wanted to make sure we were, we were uh, sharing his news as well. Uh, next slide, please. Yes, um, and isn't this wonderful? Uh, there, it was an anonymous uh, doctor, a family physician who donated 200,000 or pledged 200,000 for the um, Oakville Resiliency Fund for obviously food reliefs, uh, food relief efforts during this, uh, you know, very difficult situation. Um, and then they encouraged uh, others to, to sort of join in and then support through donations as well. Um, so absolutely wonderful. Uh, they chose to remain anonymous, um, but we wanted to give them a, um, a shout out. Um, and I think if you can just even notice the trend here, right, like everything, that we're highlighting and all the wonderful work that residents are doing. They're all doing this respecting, you know, physical distancing. Um, and I think it's really, really important for us to understand that, you know, sometimes what we want to do is to help out and, and maybe to, to congregate and, and do something really special, but you know, the, the individual making real impacts and it's possible to make real impacts while adhering to all sorts of, uh, you know, physical distancing measures and, and still being able to make uh, those positive impacts, right? So you can do so um, by making masks, you can do so by, by sewing, you can do so uh, by donating and just what all these wonderful residents in Oakville are doing. Um, so we can go on to the next slide. Um, and again, this was a Grasshopper Energy they donated, uh, which is a, you know, an, an energy uh, drink uh, company. They donated, uh, not, sorry, their energy company, they donated, um, N95 masks to Oakville Trafalgar Memorial Hospital. It's also interesting to see how businesses uh, and so many businesses in Oakville, um, when they have been impacted uh, either one way or another as a result of COVID-19 financially, they're still able to, to support their community and, and, and bring the community together and, and do their part, right? So, so huge shout out to, to Grasshopper Energy for donating N95 masks to Oakville Trafalgar. Um, and then Easter Bunny, that's you, Daniel. <laughs> Not a lot to comment on the Easter Bunny here. Hopefully some of you guys were lucky enough to see this over Easter weekend, uh, but Duran Place for Kids. Um, so they're uh, some of, two of their staff members, which I was surprised that the news article actually released who is inside the costume. I would just leave it as the Easter Bunny, um, but went around and, uh, and actually was just from a safe distance, walking down streets, waving to children, and just keeping you know, the spirit of a holiday that I'm sure everyone remembers as a child probably being uh, more of a, a family gathering than what, what some children experienced this year. So I thought that was a nice thing to add. Uh, we can do the next slide, please. Yeah, and this is again, community coming together. The Oakville Chinese Community Response Fund uh, was launched on March 18, 2020 and has surpassed over $35,000 in donations for the COVID-19 uh, response. So again, this is community, this is residents of Oakville coming together making a huge contribution uh, towards the healthcare equipment. Uh, and again, this is fantastic. This is individuals who um, are able to support in the capacity in which uh, they can. And then $35,000 is, you know, it goes a long way given the challenges that obviously the healthcare sector is experiencing with shortages of equipment and things like that. So huge shout out to the Oakville Chinese Community Response Fund. Next slide. Yeah, so the next few slides that are going to go through, I'm sure you guys have all seen them in your community. It's just the public art that's taking place, uh, you know, in the places that that folks are gathering uh, and walking. So I've just picked some of my my favorites that I've seen on the news and social media. See a lot of thanks to frontline workers, a lot of uh, creative positive messages. Uh, if you want to flip through those, I think there's a few slides of just great imagery. 
yeah, this one was great. Just their whole, you know, thanking essential workers. Um, you can hit the next one. Perfect. Um, and I believe there's a story coming that I'll, I'll share some uh, news too, because I know that we're getting to the hour. Um, yeah, there was this great story of a uh, Oakville retirement home that uh, posted on Facebook um, that, you know, the, the seniors weren't able to obviously leave their premises, uh, but did a request for people to come in and donate uh, painted rocks so that on their property, the uh, seniors would be able to see, you know, a sign of the outside world. So uh, the community came together and they uh, painted many rocks with positive messages on it. So when the seniors were you know, getting out and getting some fresh air, they got to see these little messages from others in their community, which was really, really lovely. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, another fantastic uh, institution coming together, Sheridan College in Oakville donated equipment uh, to health agencies to fight the, the coronavirus. Um, you know, and again, you're seeing all levels of, you know, institutions supporting the initiatives and, and supporting the, uh, you know, the coronavirus or the COVID-19 um, responses, you have residents, you have institutions. And so, you know, they donated over $52,000 worth of personal protective equipment. Uh, again, fantastic work from Sheridan College. A huge shout out to them. Uh, thank you so much for those donations. Uh, on to the next slide. Thanks. Yeah, so this this was the post, and I, I apologize, but those are some of the, uh, the the rocks that were decorated for those seniors. I thought that was a really nice, uh, nice gesture, and you can kind of see in the slide there where uh, one of our nice public health officials was asking if it was okay if we shared this story. Uh, so thank you to Kendra for sharing. Uh, next slide, please. Great. Perfect, and so frontline clap Friday at seven o'clock. That's just, uh, you know, Healthcare workers, all the essential workers are really going out of their way, putting their lives uh, in risk for for our safety and, and you know in this in this crisis. So um, frontline clap is just Fridays at seven o'clock. Just you know the entire city comes together and 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 appreciates all of the wonderful work that frontline uh, workers are doing. Um, and you know and it's a huge show of gratitude, huge show of thank you. Um, and, and so another wonderful initiative um, that's sort of coming together in Burlington and, and Oakville. Um, so, you know, if you haven't had the chance, obviously measuring, you know, with the physical distancing measures, frontline clap Fridays at 7 p.m. Next slide. All right. The wonderful work that individuals um, have, uh, have been doing, but I think it's really, really important um, when we're highlighting, you know, the community that we understand that staying positive is one of the most important things that we can do during, uh, you know, really stressful situations, right? And so um, one of the things that, you know, Daniel and I wanted to get across is that, you know, we need to be self-compassionate in this situation, right? To go easy on ourselves because uh, productivity, uh, routine, all these things are, have changed drastically, right? And, and, and almost like what it means and, and how it's reflected in our day-to-day -day lives has changed. Right? So, so go easy on yourself. Uh, you know, we are going through a pandemic. It's okay to, to not be as productive as, as you might have been previously. And what productive is can be so different now than it was before. Um, and, you know, the ability to manage your stress, right? To recognize that this is a very stressful situation for our residents and you know, for, for the entire world. Uh, and managing our stress doesn't mean that we're eliminating it. It just means that we're able to better come up with strategies to cope um, so that we don't feel overwhelmed, we don't feel helpless uh, or mentally exhausted. And a lot of the resources that we shared with you guys and, and the wonderful work that organizations are doing are, are, are doing so, you know, the, the phone a friend is to help us, you know, with our mental health, uh, the food insecurity, um, and all these other types of supports that the community is coming together and giving us positive messages, even through painted rocks, is so that you know we know that we live in a caring community. Uh, we know that community can come together even during difficult moments. Um, and the last thing you know we wanted to leave with you guys is is to keep busy, right? Uh, maybe keeping busy and social activities is not you know going to your local restaurant, but instead it's joining a social activity online. Uh, it's doing virtual fitness classes or an art class online. And, and to be quite honest with you, it is staying in your apartment and dancing like no one is watching you, right? Sometimes that is the best thing that you can do. Uh, just release some of that, uh, you know, energy of anxiety and things like that. Um, and if anybody knows me, I am a fantastic dancer. So I have an affinity for dancing. And, and that's what I've been doing. I just go on my balcony and just, you know, whatever, whatever beat I feel like dancing to, I, I let it loose and it makes me feel absolutely fabulous. Next slide, please. 
Great. Yeah. So just to wrap just to wrap up with just a few messages. So I just want to make sure people are, you know, kind of leaving this with, and this is a, the public health side of it is, you know, just remembering that while a lot of these things are out in the community and great, the important thing is that we are recognizing, you know, that the, safe, the safety considerations given from public health. So, you know, check in with your, those that you love, do so through phone or text, right? Share positive stories of hope and resiliency, naturally through social media, if you can, when you are, trying to go about bringing some light to someone's day you can practice kindness and compassion in so many ways um, likewise just in the way that you decide to spend your money I, I know a lot of people are doing ordering online where possible do so with local businesses um, yeah and and of course always maintaining that physical distance thank you uh, next slide there and we'll um, for those for those helping older adults and vulnerable community members. So again, this is something that comes through through our, our public health team is, you know, let's making sure that we are, if we are aware, or if you, if you believe you might be the, you know, the primary contact for an individual who is vulnerable um, due to their age, um, please reach out to them and make sure that they are actually getting their essential items, like their groceries, prescriptions, whatever they need. And, you know, make sure that you're also the person who's bringing the essential item of kindness and compassion to them as well. If you are thinking about volunteering, um, I would direct everyone towards the Spark Ontario Hub. Um, that way, it's uh, it's something that's run from the provincial government, so you know that the opportunities that they are promoting or act, are giving access to are those which are you know recognized in the public safety guidelines. Um, many of the groups that uh, were featured today are likely will have their opportunities made available through Spark as well. Um, so please stay connected, please spend and volunteer locally and. Don't feel bad about staying home. You're actually doing an incredible thing in service for the community. Uh, next slide, please. Some yes. of those things are not to do. Um, yeah, I, I feel like you probably heard this quite often. Uh, obviously, keeping within your, your small circle, staying out of public spaces where possible. Um, naturally, this is not the time to be yeah, celebrating with large groups in your home or even out in public. Um, yeah, what not to do, I feel like, is uh, pretty common knowledge at this place, but it's uh, still not let up yet. We're still moving forward. Uh, thank you, and I think that's all for There's this. There's one slide. more slide, yeah. Oh. I think it's it's some of, the same, some of the same things that we mentioned before from the region. Um, one thing that I forgot to mention, you know, there's a lot of do nots, which you cannot do uh, with regards to physical or social distancing. One of the things you can do and, and we can promote is next week, is Youth Week, uh, and I forgot to mention that, and, and the town of Oakville, along with uh, partners, I believe, Halton Environmental Network, and, and, and even Kirstree, and all these wonderful partners, we're hosting so many different activities. I'm gonna put a link down below where you can find the activities for youth to be engaged in, uh, and also um, the town of Oakville's youth uh, Instagram account, follow them, they have tons of activities. I'm sure if you have uh, you know, youth in your household, uh, keeping them engaged is, um, is quite interesting. Um, this is one way to do so. Um, so yeah, that, I think that's that's it. Um, any other words, Daniel? Yeah, did, no, I, I'm appreciating everyone's comments, just, you know, the positive vibes. Positive vibes are all around. If you're sitting at home thinking, oh man, there's more I should be doing, you're, you're doing it. And for those of you who are working for organizations who are have to be out, man, really appreciate what you guys got going on, what you've been doing in our community. Um, I do, uh, I, I think Tricia has the last word for us. Uh, great. Thank you. Uh, that was, yeah, thank you to everybody, especially uh, Nabil and Daniel. That was uh, super inspiring, very uplifting uh, to see what everybody, how everybody's coming together individually and as organizations um, to support, to provide support to our community. So um, just again, um, if you enjoyed this webinar and want to watch any of the previous webinars um, that we've done through this COVID-19 pandemic, you can visit the Oakville Ready website at oakvilleready.ca. And there's a list of all of our pre-recorded webinars and our upcoming webinars, which um, the one I'd like to promote right now is Square Foot Gardening. It'll take place on May 11th at 1 p.m. And it is going to be hosted by the Halton Food uh, Network. So it'll, again, be a fantastic one. We also have the Oakville Public Library. We're just trying to nail down a date with them. And they're going to talk to us about all the terrific online resources they have available uh, for us and, um, and maybe an upcoming one from the Oakville Community Foundation on how we can support uh, local businesses and people through this pandemic. 
Um, Daniel and uh, Nabil made mention of supporting local businesses at this time, and I just want to give a little shout out. Um, the town of Oakville did just, um, I don't know, release distantly.ca and uh, through its economic um, kind of recovery program through this pandemic. And it lists a couple, um, well, a variety of local businesses that um, need support during this time. I did a quick search for Kerr Street Ministries and didn't find it there, but I urge you if you are an organization that needs support to register on the website or if you're looking to give support, maybe check it out and see who's in the greatest need here in Oakville. So thank you again um, to everybody that was on the line and um, for everything that you're doing within the community. Um, everybody keep in touch as we're talking about. Lisa and I, our contact information can be found there. Um, and we have access to Daniel and Nabil's if you don't have it as well. So thank you for joining us today. And I hope everybody uh, has a lovely, lovely afternoon. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye, guys. Take care, guys. Bye.